Hi, I'm Ramona and welcome to Ramona Interviews. And with me in the chair today is Michael True, and he is the Vice President for the Center of Nonviolent Solutions. He has, uh, Michael has done, Michael, Mr. True, has done <laughs> a lot of things. Um, and I was able to take a short bio from his website, so I'm going to read uh, it out a little bit. He is a professor at Assumption College. He is the author and editor of 12 books, including An Energy Field More Intense Than War, uh, and The Nonviolent Tradition, uh, People Power, 50 Peacemakers and Their Community, oh, and sorry, and then a book, Their, their Community. <laughs> His essays and reviews and poems have appeared in scholarly and general periodicals, including The Commonwealth, America, The New Republic, The Progressive, The Boston Globe, and The Harvard Divinity Bulletin. He lives in Worcester uh, with his family and his loving wife, and welcome. Thank you very much. Now, let's start off um, with, let's, let's go right into it, peace. What does it mean, and how has that meaning encapsulated your life and mm. your um, studies and teachings? Well, peace, I prefer the word peacemaking, uh, and it's been a long journey. I've been involved for 50 years. I, my first participation uh, in a demonstration was 1961 in Durham, North Carolina, during the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, I was in graduate school at Duke and then later teaching at an all-black college in uh, Durham. And so these were my students I was on the street with. And, and they were extremely disciplined. They'd been trained in nonviolence. They were so far ahead of me. I mean, I didn't really know what I was getting involved in because I, I actually was there to support them because uh, at that time in Durham, North Carolina, African Americans could not sit on the first floor of the theater. They had to sit in what they called the crow's nest, that is the, the balcony. So I became involved, but it was years before I really understood all the implications of that because um, I think, like many people, I probably became involved because I was opposed to the war. I was very active uh, in the movement against the war in Vietnam. In fact, I went to jail for 10 days with students from Clark. So I think my initial involvement was that I was opposed to the violence, to the, to the, to the killing. I, I was teaching and I saw my students, whom I loved, uh, going off to war in a war that uh, seemed to me, and I think was, a, a total mistake. Even Henry Kissinger is saying that now, mm -hmm. that the policy was flawed and it should never have happened. But then uh, I began to realize that uh, it's easy to be anti-anything. <laughs> it's easy to be anti-war. The really hard part is, how, what do you do, uh, as William James, the great philosopher, said in an essay called The Moral Equivalent of War, what do you give to people that will satisfy that that sort of inclination toward being heroic and being brave. And soldiers are extremely heroic and very brave and very intelligent. But the thing is, all of this is going to destruction, to causing pain and to perpetuating violence. And uh, so we have to think, what can we do that would help satisfy that, that kind of physical or uh, um, uh, human need uh, to fulfill that and give people a sense of purpose. Well, one of the things was the Peace Corps, and actually the Peace Corps, which was initiated by uh, Kennedy and his associates in the 1960s, that that was in response to William James' essay, A Moral Equivalent of War. They thought this would be a way in which young people, and they have, they've done great work. A number mm -hmm. of my students have been in the Peace Corps, and they go abroad and they do great work and they discover so much about themselves and about the people they're with and they're able to do very good things. So we need peacemaking skills. Um, and uh, we're way ahead of where we were 40 years ago in understanding this. In 1999, uh, the UN Decade for the Culture of Peace for the uh, Children of uh, Peace and Nonviolence for the Children of the World. This was a declaration and a manifesto that was passed by 189 nations in the General Assembly. So we have a document that is very clear about what are the important constituents of peacemaking. Mm -hmm. And they include 
you know, equal rights of uh, men and women, uh, sustainable development, uh, nonviolence education. Uh, how do you learn to be a mediator? How do you how, how do you act and and how do you proceed in an effort when you are see pe two people in conflict? And mm -hmm. what can you do that is practically maybe helpful? It may just be say, I'm here watching you. Mm -hmm. If you say that, sometimes people will. Or if you just give a shout, don't do that. Sometimes that will bring people to attention. But different, uh, for different contexts, different approaches. Mm -hmm. So um, our work through the Center for Nonviolent Solutions is to suggest, and if you look at our website, which is very active, uh, you will see that we have all kinds of resources uh, referring people to, and we have people trained in mediation. We have a lot of very skilled people. We have one, of, one of the people I most admire that I've met uh, through the Center for Nonviolent Solutions is a man by the name of Michael Langa. Uh, he is from um, South Africa, and he actually worked with Desmond Tutu in South Africa on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And he's done conflict resolution in four countries in Africa. He recently went, returned to South Africa because there was an area of the country where there was great discrimination against people who had AIDS. Mm -hmm. So this is a person, I mean, he has the most extraordinary skills. I've seen him in action. He came to a class, we were talking together, and he had really, I thought, a genius for drawing the students in so that they became participants. I was, you know, my long experience of teaching, I suppose I talk too much <laughs> and <laughs> tend to lecture. Sorry about that. But uh, I was just, and, and I obviously my goal always in teaching was to involve the students. And I just saw Michael with his training in conflict resolution, just had a just terrific- Just draw them in. Just like that, yeah. you know, it was, yeah. it was wonderful. So, um, there are these skills, and as I said, I've been a long, I'm, I learn slowly, I'm pretty slow. Uh, so it's taken me a long time to really appreciate what you have pointed to, and that is the primary distinction between anti-war and peacemaking. Two They're totally different worlds. Totally different worlds. And I think that many people, very hard to differentiate, but also interesting is, is that peacemaking is not something that's out in other countries. That's another thing too, I think a lot of people say, well, you know, yeah, okay, it's nice to have that document. It's, it's nice to make this declaration, you know, it's kind of common sense, but you know, <laughs> hey, sometimes you need it, you know, so. okay. But you know, they think, well, that's in other countries mm -hmm. where, not in America, because we have these freedoms and we have these civil rights, but, but peacemaking is a lot of things. It's in the family. Uh, the first two books I wrote were about peacemaking in the family. If someone were to go to the website, um, would they be able to find tools to use? Is there like a toolbox on this website? <laughs> it's um, nonviolentsolutions.org. Yes. Um, would they be able to like look up certain things and, yes. and find things that That's are practical right. to use? Let me just say, if we, we have a the wonderful person in our office, her, her name is uh, um, uh, Libby Westy, and she's a teacher, she's very skilled, a librarian, and she keeps our website up to date. So we have there the resources that are available, so we can refer to specific people. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a mediator, there are mediators here in town who are very skilled. We had at one time at Burncote High School a mediation program where the students were mediating the conflicts. That's a great idea. Oh, what it's, a great it's fantastic, idea. and it was very successful. My granddaughter was in the program and then they dropped it. What a sense of empowerment, though. Empowerment is what peacemaking is about, I think, oftentimes. Yeah. Is Not that, only personal uh, empowerment, but, but a societal empowerment, that's because right. you realize that your decision is going to affect every other student. That's right. And I, you know, and I think that kids are really open. When most, um, majority of children, kids, are really open when they have a clear and defined path. That's right. Yeah, as long the, the, the as, as it's clear away. and as long as they're able to think their way into it, too. We had, for example, last uh, semester uh, at the University Park High School, we had an elective course in nonviolence and peacemaking for, for students. It was taught by Paul Ropp, who's a very distinguished China historian, uh, and also by um, Tom Del Preet, who is head of the Hyatt School of Religion. Wonderful people. And so they had a 10-week course introducing students to nonviolence, to mm -hmm. some of the key figures, to, to what nonviolence is all about. It's mm -hmm. active, mm -hmm. it's, it's, nonviolence is not a good word, it really should be a word 
uh, similar to the one that Gandhi used, Satyagraha, which is truth force, because it's really, it's a force and it's a power. And so, uh, but it was very interesting because these two people are obviously very skilled teachers. And we got the final evaluations and, and the kids were completely frank. Oh, I never thought of anybody saying, I don't, would, would you take it again? Oh yeah, I, mean, <laughs> you know, I don't know the way to work or, you know, yeah. all the doubts that we yeah. all have. That's about, okay, that's but fine. the knowledge is in there. But they, t they took it in and they would recommend others taking it. Yeah. So what can you, can't now, do better than that. Is that still going on? Uh, it isn't going this semester, but uh, we. This semester where? At, at University Park High School. Okay, yeah. uh, But we hope to reinstitute it in other schools uh, by this fall. We have just received a very fine grant that uh, is gonna help us with funding for the next three years. Right. And our priorities there, one of the priorities is to offer a graduate course for teachers mm -hmm. um, uh, at Clark University through the High School of Education. And this would include uh, an introduction to nonviolence, some uh, discussions of successful nonviolent movements around the world, including the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. the democratic uh, uprising in China, the uh, Gandhi, of course, and, and others. So it will be instruction in that. But not only would it provide the teachers with materials and resources, mm -hmm. but also they will get a budget to buy supplies for their classroom. The other thing is that we could talk about are the, all the initiatives that are taking place all over the world right now, which is where our, our, our attention should be focused, not on the violence, but on the people who are under impossible conditions building cultures of peace. peace. Yeah. Uh, Israelis and Palestinians in Israel who've worked for years to resolve that conflict. Why we, aren't, we don't hear about that. We don't hear about so that. Why aren't they on the front see, page? That, that in itself would be a great <laughs> next show. Okay. Yeah, really, well, thank you, Michael, for coming on. You're welcome. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for your questions and your attentiveness. It's wonderful. Thank you. I am Ramona, and you've been watching Ramona Interviews. We'll see you soon. Have a great week, Worcester.